Hello, my name is Evan Wilhite, and I'm a senior front-end engineer at Four Kitchens. And we are talking about component-based theming. This is the third video in the series. And this is uh, where we're going to dive into a little bit more complex of an example, but it's one that you'll find yourself doing frequently. What we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about a designed card component. So a card component is something that's very common uh, today on the web. And I've done a very basic one for this purpose. So here is our card uh, over in the style guide so you can see it as simply as possible. We have an image, a title, and some body text here. Um, just found quickly a good example of a card component that's already kind of more highly designed is over here. Um, so yeah, really common pattern. And what I've gone ahead and done as well is on the Drupal site, I've created some articles. So these are some articles that are just automatically populated on the home page by default in Drupal. And what I want to show is how to create those cards, create the card component itself, and then to include those as a node on the website, as well as multiples in a view. So let's start with the card itself. So here's our card component. I'm under molecules, card. And this is our style sheet where I've defined just some very basic styles. Uh, and here's our twig file that defines our markup. This is a very, very simple example, um, really just for the demonstration purposes. You would be more likely to have checks around some of these fields to make sure that they were there. Um, I think that's the only thing that you need to be worried about in this directory. The rest of these files are actually pattern lab specific. The markdown files provide some info, and then the YAML files are uh, just stock content. It's what fills in our uh, filler content here for the pattern lab. So yeah, you have your twig file, you have your uh, style sheet defining those styles. And so how do we pull that in on Drupal? Um, let's go down just as we did in the last video. What we would want to do in this circumstance is we would want a node uh, article and in this situation the teaser specifically. So I've already created this file here. I've actually already created the include to show you the syntax. And so you'll see here that this is very similar to what we did with the heading. We have a few more fields, and I've gone ahead and taken the time to find out what the uh, how to get the image source and the alt tag for the image to populate those. Um, again, things that you would do in Drupal theming anyways, but you'll notice again that there's no markup in here. There's nothing in here that's going to get duplicated anywhere. We're literally just saying include this uh, card component that we've already built elsewhere and just populate these uh, variables that we define that make sense in the card with the ones that are system specific provided by Drupal. So now that we've done that, you've probably noticed already that it's pulling in the styles for these cards. So here you can see uh, we're pulling in the, the heading two style for the title, the body. So yeah, that's all there is to um, including that as a card teaser. So what about if you want to display these in rows and we want to do something like what's shown here, uh, where we have three across on a larger screen. Um, so let's go into that right now. So I've created a view called articles and it has a page at the URL articles and I'll show you that here in a second. And I've gone ahead and created our um, articles page file here. Now you'll notice this file is actually a lot simpler. So let's go up to the card component. So we have, we have the card component itself and then we have a card grid component under organism. So card is under molecules, it's smaller, it's a single item. Under organis organisms, we have the larger element that shows all of the cards in a grid. And so in this twig file, you'll notice that really all that is happening here is we have the card grid and then there's another include. So we're saying include the card twig file. This uh, syntax is actually pattern lab specific. Pattern lab allows you to say uh, for list item and list items, that is uh, something that you can use anywhere in pattern lab and then you can say how many you want there to be. So I'll show you what this looks like. If we go over here to card grid so this has gone ahead and made our grid for us uh, the only styling that's actually applied is just that flex styling on the outside to, to make sure that they show in line like that um, you would have more but just for this purpose you know it's simple and uh, again it's just looping through this is pattern lab pattern lab is looping through and showing uh, for every instance in this so three items show a card 
and then I'm providing again some default um, content that that Pattern Lab also allows you to use. So how do we use this in Drupal? So if we included this file in Drupal, um, it is going to pay attention to our outer markup, but it's going to ignore this. This isn't Drupal syntax. So what would we do to get this file to show Drupal specific information? So now you'll see I've gone ahead and added the syntax uh, for the Drupal rows. And this is actually syntax that that views file expects. So if we go down here and we open up the views file, you'll notice that rows is what actually prints our views rows. Um, you would notice that especially uh, if you pulled open stable and you grab that template from within stable. So this is stable's default template and you can see that for row and row. So rows is the expected syntax there. Um, there's this if title section, which we don't need for this purpose. So it's really just the include. And we don't even need this because we don't have the title. That was a piece that I took out. So we're really just including this card grid and uh, we're telling it in the component itself that if rows exist, if that's a uh, if that's a variable that is provided, then loop through those. Otherwise, for pattern lab's sake, let's just show this. So if we do that, and we go over here to our article section. We have uh, the items three across that have been provided. We have not only the article teasers using the card component, but we have the view itself wrapping them in the correct wrapper. And you can see, and if we inspect our markup here, you can see how simple our markup is here. We've defined all of this markup. So here's our cards, and then there's the grid that contains them. Uh, very controlled. Uh, a single source of markup to provide for all of these. And to give you a good example of the power of this, let's say we want to go over here and do the home page the same way. You can see this view isn't pulling in these styles. So now that I know the template naming that I need, I'm going to duplicate this file and I'm going to name it front page and page one. Go over here and clear my cache. And just like that, we have created the front page view to match that same articles view, and we haven't duplicated any efforts, and the markup that is controlling both of them is controlled in one location. It's the best case scenario for a front end person who's working on code. Create markup in one place, have it be used elsewhere, if there's troubleshooting that needs to be done, there's a single source um, where you can go to to edit and to make changes. So yeah, I hope this has been helpful. Uh, I may make some more videos on down the road on uh, a little bit more complex situations. Uh, using this in paragraphs in particular has some, some differences uh, with views. Um, but yeah, thanks for your time.